here's the Q boxy. I uh, just thought I'd take it out of the box and just show everyone. So here's the here's what it comes in. It comes with a power adapter. Um, this is the i4 Pro. So move that out of the way. And uh, it has PCM digital audio, gigabit, HDMI, SD card, USB 2.0, eSATA, micro USB, and uh, it also has Wi-Fi 802.11n. And it has uh, this particular model has infrared receiver and transmitter. So, okay. So there it is, small footprint. We'll get started on the console. Okay, so we're at the download section of Solid Run's website. So it's www.solid-run.com forward slash supports forward slash downloads. Here you'll see the ignition system and there's the download section. It turns out it's 36.2 megabytes, so it's a really fast download. Uh, there's no need to decompress anything. It, it comes as an IMG. Um, also, you'd want to use SD card formatter. Uh, it comes in Windows or Mac. Uh, or whatever utility, but I would suggest that you format your, your SD card completely and as in uh, write to the entire volume. This is what it looks like for me. I did a um, for disk 3, 7.89 gigabytes. Uh, I used the Apple SDXC reader media system and I instead of doing a quick format I overrode it and I called it system. Um, here We'll have, we have some, some directions written down here. I actually did disk util list, so we can list those volumes. It's always a good idea to check first. Uh, here we have the volume listing. This is the one that we're worried about, which is uh, disk 3. And it's 7.9. Uh, and then I will unmount with disk utility. I need to change that to a 3 at the first partition and remove it so it says it unmounted and then now if you look at my working directory which is uh, PWD uh, it's in the desk I'm on the desktop and I, here's the image that I have to put uh, which is the ignition image that I downloaded from their website I'm gonna um, copy this information and it's ig.img and then on disk 3 and I'm going to go ahead and hit enter it's going to ask me for the password okay so it was that fast now I'm going to get here from here I'm going to go ahead and choose eject and I will show you the screen um, of the QBoxy Here's the installation. This is what you're presented with. Um, it has a GitHub URL. So I'm going to go ahead and choose openelect.tv. You can see other distributions here. You can also set up your Wi-Fi or do a debug. I'm going to go ahead and just do an installation of OpenElect.tv, and then just click install, and it says it's going to overwrite data. Go ahead and click yes, and there it goes. So it just takes a few minutes, and I'll speed this up or overlap it so that it's not taking too long but it just takes about five minutes okay so now that it's nearing completion it's going to go ahead and prompt me for reboot when it hits 100 percent so ask me installation's done do you want to restart click yes Now it's going to open elect. Um, it's not quite the latest version, but when you update it will be. 
and you saw how fast that was it's going to ask me some general settings it also says open elect update available so I'm going to go ahead and click next it's also updating the, the libraries I'm going to go ahead and choose the default host name uh, that if you wanted to call your uh, Qboxy something different uh, you enter that here for its host name on the network so I'm going to leave it alone on here it's wired I have it physically plugged in with a network ethernet cable so it's it's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and leave it that way um, and I I enable SSH or uh, Samba so uh, or both of them I mean um, so and Samba's Windows networking and SSH is um, um, a terminal session thank you and it's done now um, I go right away to system and then uh, system and then um, look at the settings make sure that they're all where they need to be open elect system and then I automatic updates is set to manual so I say check for updates now and it asks me uh, your current version is 495.5 latest version is 4.972 so I'm going to go would you like to update I'm going to say yes and it's going to go ahead and pull down the update information and you just let it do its process it's going to do its own thing so um okay so that's officially how to get XBMC all the way up to date with it updated uh, if you like what you saw today, please subscribe. Also, um, please visit my subreddit. Uh, it's our Linux boards or uh, my Facebook group, which is called Linux Development Boards.